We're having some fun with this unusual skinny fat bike wheel build. So far, we've calculated our ERD and spoke length, and we've drilled holes in our blank rim. In this episode, we're in Monterey, California at the Sea Otter Classic, and have decided to do some wheel lacing during some downtime at the hotel. If you can excuse Ben's improvisational filming style, we'll give you a small taste of the process. We are now at Sea Otter and we're going to show uh, a way to lace a wheel. There's uh, several roads uh, to roam. Uh, there's different ways to do this. I'm going to show you one way. It's not the way I even do much anymore. It is a way I learned. Um, uh, but again, there's different ways to put the spokes in the hub and connect it to the rim. But the rim is the real hero of this, this video. So if you recall, we have 33 holes. We did not miss drill because we had one as a valve hole. 32. We drilled these holes, uh, fixturing on the drill press. Uh, now we're going to lace them into our wide fat bike hub. So talk about how this will be done. So one way that's actually very fast, a very fast way, so that's why I'm going to show you this. Um, once you know how to do it, but very much a pain in the neck uh, until you practice it a lot, is to fill the entire hub with spokes and then go all the way around the rim. So very much a pain. So uh, we'll show you, show you that. So first, I'm going to drop a, a spoke here. Every other one we, so every other one, this is going to be a three cross pattern. So the spokes now are heads out on the flange and of course the other side is going to be heads in so, or elbows out if you want to see it that way and of course it does speed things if you can fan them out a little bit like this that's kind of a, a fun thing to do for wheel builders so the fun thing here I have to look at my rim and determine which hub, which hole on the rim. We can see this one is staggered a little bit. We'll call it to the upside or the drive side. If I'm holding it this way, this is staggered to the non-drive. So we're gonna pretend this is gonna be the drive. So if that's, that's my hole here, can we see that? I'm gonna put, put my finger right there. If that's what I want, I want my pulling spoke to go right here. Pow. So, before doing uh, 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 the nipple on that, I'm actually going to go to the other flange. The reason I'm doing this is I want to find the next spoke here to, let's see, to our viewing audience's right. It's this one here. So I want to come over here. And I'm going to take my long spokes. I have two different pile of spokes. I'm going to come and I'm going to select this one right here. So this, this is kind of fun. We'll have to do a whole nother video later to explain how this works. The drilling in these flanges is offset. So this is my key spoke here. This is going to be in the same direction. It's going to fall to this side of where my key spoke is because that's where the hole in the rim fell. So the hub matches the rim. So if I know that's there, then I know where to do all the others. There, isn't that nice? So now you can see uh, what I'm saying is very difficult to deal with, but they're, all, they're in already, so it's, it works on, on the economies of, of scale. That's why that's faster. So I'm going to go here, and this will be easy. Now remember, we wanted the, the washer. The little washer is gonna go right down there, and then the nipple. I'm going to spin that down a few turns and work that baby in. There's one. 
So I want to find the parallel spoke so I don't have crossing at my valve. I can count over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, the seventh spoke is my parallel spoke for a three cross. There we are. And another washer. And another nipple. <clears throat> so where did that seven come from? That's what old bike mechanics know. So if you get to be an old bike mechanic, this is something you, <clears throat> you're gonna pick up. It just comes from paying attention and cheating. Cheating is okay. You look at somebody who's already done a wheel and you count them and you look at the pattern, you can figure it out, all right? So use other wheels that have been done. So now it's getting trickier because it's harder to get the nipple into the rim and not lose the spokes because the spoke is not coming all the way through. Well, it's not supposed to. So something I like to use here is a toothpick. So this is one of your, your little mechanic tricks. So a toothpick, you take it and you have to bite just the very end off the toothpick. You don't want it too long and pointy and it sticks right in the end there and we have a little spinning tool. Okay, well, the best toothpicks are actually the square ones and a little maybe mint, a little flavor there is, is nice. So there we go. So we spin that on, see how that reach, reach through there, it lets us start a few threads. We can control that nice. Grab the nipple and spin that off. And now I'm ready for the second one. So we were showing you with the rim vertical, it's not really good to work that way. This is really how I would prefer to lace is flat. So it's not as easy for you to see, but for me, it is easier to, to work with. You can get that spoke right in there easily. I spin that down and uh, back that off. So working flat, a little better orientation. My other spokes hang down, so that's, that's the way to be, flat. Now it's time for the other flange. This is the spoke that I want, already predetermined from how I threw the spokes in. So I want it to reach there. Why is it this one? If I follow down to the flange, it is falling to the left of this one. That's my reference spoke, my very first spoke. So this hole is to the left, so it goes to the left at the rim. So that is, that's the one I want for right there. So I'm gonna lay it flat. I'm going to put it in, and we're going to keep moving. So I got two, two more to go here, so install and uh, engage. There we go, run that down. Let's do a check. Here is the stem. I have parallelness, so um, we have every other one that looks good. Everything's crossed, so let's... Let's enjoy this now. Oh, we have the drive side here. It's gonna have shorter, slightly shorter spokes. Actually, not so slight. These are longer spokes over here. Uh, that's gonna be helping to give us dish. We're still gonna have to have this tighter, but you can see that looks really nice. So, so that's our, not our finished wheel. We still need to pull it up tight. So now on the rear hub that I'm doing, uh, time to pull it up. I've pulled it up and snugged it up. And it's kind of fun if we look down close, this looks like, oh, this is a skinny, fancy racing rim. I'm looking at that, but then I, I bring my eyes up here. Whoa, that's huge. That's a fad hub. So I'm, I'm looking up here. I'm, I'm, this is some sort of continuity problem I'm having. This is fad hub, but I come down here, skinny rim. So I, what, it's, just, it's just great. This is, I love this wheel. So we, we have really wide bracing here. You know, huge angle here, a slight angle here, uh, but it's come out, it's coming out pretty good. So tension, I'm gonna squeeze here. It's pretty soft. It's probably not even worth getting our, uh, our TM1 out yet. It's, I'm gonna see really low numbers here. I come to my chart. Yep, I'm really low tension. So I gotta pull tension up a little bit more, but it's coming together like a like a plan. So it's, it's gonna be a great, uh, a great wheel. So more on that as it, uh, as it moves along. Oh, and one more mechanic trick. You may be chewing the wheel. It looks good here. You do this. There. All right. You get close to your work. You don't want. 
don't want that head rim hitting you in the face. So that's the tip for today. Next time on Shop Talk. We're gonna glue some stuff up here, put some glue on the rim, put some glue on the tire, put them together and we have a finished bicycle wheel. So we want a coat here, two different coats of glue are gonna be stuck together. I'm more of an artist, I consider yeah. myself a painter. It's good to do so that you can say, yeah, I've done that, never ever do that. Yeah. So.